Hello my soccer universe. I have a new phone. <laughs> that I'm doing the video this is one of the reasons why I haven't done any um, video as of late. But uh, the other reason is, of course, that I'm, you know, uh, I was easing into this international break. I quickly shot the uh, preview video for the World Cup qualifiers, and now I had to get used to the Nations League. But now that I'm in it, I'm very happy to have it. But back to the new phone. As you can see with the new phone. Uh, I hope the picture quality might be better, however, everything is a little bit more zoomed in, <laughs> which is an unintended consequence that I didn't know before. Uh, I have to see if I can work around this a little bit more, but on the other side, I actually like it a little bit fuller as well. Uh, also, uh, and I don't know yet while I'm shooting, because I probably should have um, made a trial video, but I think that the microphone will also uh, fits also much better in the phone outlet. So I. I I hope this will also improve the sound quality, picture quality, everything improved, I hope. So let's see, let's see. Of course I'm wearing the Netherlands uh, after that huge win. Yes, no, I'm not wearing Austria, although I'm very, very happy with the result. Before we go into the results, and I admit I've been really lazy, I've been mostly watching League A, uh, which, you know, if it wouldn't come so directly after the, um, uh, the club season, I probably could dive in deeper into the Nations League, but I really needed a little bit more of a break. And it's nice that the games are all in the evening, it opens up nicely the day and so on. But it's still, yeah, um, it seems a little bit uh, ill-timed, the whole thing. And I'm not the only one who says so. I think the players also agree that, you know, we have to pay, play four games in a matter of two weeks. And some of them are, you know, and most, most of them are 10 days. And it's a, a really rough schedule after a long season. And that's also, I think, the major reason. Because this first round was full of surprises and unexpected results. And I think this rough schedule is very much a big reason for that. Uh, I think all of the results here, we can maybe take slight hints. But not more than that, uh, whether this will mean something for the upcoming World Cup. But if I'm honest, um, I think we have to take it with a grain of salt. The one thing that this will force national team coaches to do, especially the ones for the big um, uh, the big names, you know, where we have teams, where, 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 where players in the big leagues that played a whole lot, it actually forces them to, um, uh, you know, change the squad up a little bit. And funnily enough, uh, Austria is exactly doing that. Uh, and yeah, it helps that with Ralf Rangnick, a new coach is coming in, a new coach that wants to get to know as many players as possible. But uh, it also helps him to kind of gauge where are, where are we and, you know, to give like Alaba a rest uh, and he joins the team the, the team now. He even complained, I would have liked to have more substitutions. Now, uh, five substitutions, I think, definitely help. So, yeah, we had many upsets. None of the top teams in Europe uh, really won, except for the Netherlands, uh, who, uh, big exclamation point, I have to say, winning in Belgium. Um, as I said, take it with a grain of salt. However, I think uh, this, while this may not mean all that much for the Netherlands yet, it may definitely have a saying that, you know, maybe this golden generation of Belgium is a little bit fizzling out. Just mentioning it there, I might be proven wrong. So let's go. So I would say, uh, um, and before we go into the games, uh, I will do, yes, I should talk about the Finalissima as well. I should talk about the uh, Scotland-Ukraine game. I will do this tomorrow. I decided uh, this will be a World Cup uh, video. Now I'm purely talking Nations League. So let's uh, look into the games that I've had. I mean, the first one that I got really into, and, and, and you know, it, at the moment I'm working a whole lot. So mostly it is me uh, programming and having the game on and watching and more listening. But Spain, Portugal uh, seemed to be a nice menu item. And I have to say, this was, uh, it was in the interesting sense. I think Rafa Leao actually for the first time really had a good showing for Portugal, except that he didn't put the ball in, into the net. Um, and Spain actually showed some nice uh, stuff going forward as well, especially the goal by Morat in the 25th was really, really nicely played. Then I thought, especially in the second half, that Spain is going to hang on and maybe even uh, double their lead. 
um, especially with then, you know, uh, changes coming and so on. Um, but Joao Cancelo in the 86 seconds assists uh, Otta from Braga, who is only in his second uh, international. And I think the first one was like five or six years ago. Scores the equalizer. So I was actually, that was happy. I was happy to see 1-1 uh, in the Clash of the Giants. Um, we have to see what this means going forward for the for, for, for the Nations League. But I think it was a more or less expected result. Portugal haven't won in Spain. In a long time, and I mean a really long time. Uh, we had then, of course, uh, Belgium and the Netherlands coming up. Uh, you know, they, these were the three slots where I said, okay, I'm gonna, gonna watch all Belgium, Netherlands, Croatia, Austria, and France, Denmark. And unfortunately, the zone only did the conference in Germany. So I had to choose and I watched uh, or the Austria game and I watched the Belgium Netherlands game and then uh, uh, relied on highlights for uh, France. And boy, this was a really exciting evening, but not even one if you are uh, for the big nations. Well, I felt the Belgium Netherlands at the beginning was uh, level. You always had the feeling that the Dutch are more organized and especially uh, uh, De Bruyne seemed to be totally not there. He seems to be uh, injured, overplayed, everything everything that you want to hurl at him. Uh, he, it didn't look right. I mean, he still has the deadly foot in there. But yeah, didn't look good. Lukaku got in, injured in a, a kind of weird duel with um, uh, Nathan Ake. And so it seemed like advantage Netherlands in terms of build-up play. But overall, it was a little bit uh, yeah, so-and-so affair. Until the Frank de Jong plays it to Bergwijn, who from far out uh, puts it in, in, in its net at the same time as Austria scored the first goal. It was literally the same, <laughs> the same time. At least, you know, I had a delay in the because the one I watched on TV, the other one was um, via streaming, so I know there's a little bit delayed there. But it was literally at the same time. I was um, for Austria going up there, then I look, oh, there, there's there, that's also good. Yeah, let's keep the hands up. <laughs> and it is. Duplicity of events. It's just happened the same way in the second half for the sack sack of a Memphis Depay makes it then 2 0, and then it really got rough for Belgium. Uh, uh, Dumf Dumfries and Depay with a second pile on, and it was uh, out of the out of destruction. Then the Dutch uh, laid off a little bit. They had won, won the game. Belgium uh, first scored a goal that was this, this one, and very late Michi Bakhtuai. Uh, got one in, but pretty impressive win uh, by the Dutch. They, Louis van Gaal, I always say that he might be for a national team manager, he might be actually really, 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 really good. Uh, watch out for the Netherlands at the World Cup, they are a little bit um, underrepresented. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot say watch out for Austria at the World Cup because Austria didn't qual qualify because they didn't make the change sooner. Of course, I don't think we could have gotten Ralf Rangnick um, when it was time for the for, 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 for the for the playoffs. But what a difference a coach makes! No, it has to be said for the, the result is flattering to Austria a little bit. Um, Croatia, especially in the first half hour, when Austria played with a back three, Austria couldn't get any grip on the midfield. Uh, lost balls quickly whenever they had possession, they quickly lost it as well. And Croatia could play uh, out of the press a little bit and uh, had actually, I mean, not a really clear chance, but had quite a few chances uh, that, you know, on a different day they make this and then the game switches fully into Croatia's way. However, kudos to Austria, they actually uh, switched then around the 30th minute, switched to a back four. And suddenly the whole thing got a lot more stable. It allowed them to, uh, you know, f uh, use the full width of the, of, of the field and have the uh, midfielders be a little bit more dominant as well. Uh, and, uh, you know, absorb also the Croatia, the, 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 the Croatian players. And from that moment on, you really felt that Austria is getting in, in to the, into the game. And then uh, Onisivo plays a really smart uh, ball to Anatovic, uh, who then takes a run and is not really attacked as well and takes a shot in one little Austria. At this point, at the very point where Austria scored, everyone thought, yeah, that's not really deserved. That's completely against the run of, of play. However, Austria doubled down. And the funny thing is that um, Rangnick really wanted to see different players. So Onisivo, Leiner and Anatovic came off and Gregor Strimmel Seibert came, uh, came, 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 came on. And it actually worked to, to, to the advantage. It showed that Austria has a real good squad depth because uh, especially Gregoric um, really showed up. He had a huge chance to make it 2-0. And then in the 54th, um, 
uh, uh, Wilbur with a brilliant uh, cross in uh, and Gregoric uh, one times it into the net in the 50, in, in 54th and then uh, you saw the good pressing from Austria uh, a few a few minutes later there are a few situations where Croatia wants to uh, clear Austria blocks it, Austria blocks it, Austria blocks it, ball comes to Savica from far out 3-0 and the Croatian crowd is going nuts and from that moment on Croatia did not get a grip on the game anymore it actually could have been a higher a win for Austria, although I would say given the first half, this would not, 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 not be deserved. But Austria had really good control of that game, which is something unimaginable of what I've seen before. I knew that the team has it in, but now with Ralf Rangnick, they have a coach that actually can unleash it. Now, it has to be said, it was not all super. And uh, Ralf Rangnick did a wonderful job in kind of uh, tapering the expectations, of course, um, during the broadcast. Well, there are still tickets available for the games against Denmark and against France. Go out, go out, go out and buy. And so we did. <laughs> no, I did it already before. But on that a little bit later. So yeah, uh, that was enjoyable. Um, I'm not sure what I can say about France-Denmark. I mean, uh, Denmark was always a little bit um, nasty to play with at the beginning. But France then actually in the second, uh, second half of the um, first half got a little bit more control of, of, of the game and created uh, changes. Mbappé had to come off and Kunku came on and, and he immediately then uh, nicely combined with Benzema who scored a, a wonderful, brilliant goal. Of course, a lot of eyes because this was played in the Stade de France. So uh, what is hap happening there? Um, yeah, seemingly it, didn't, it, it worked. It, 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 this time with a mostly French crowd. So yeah, uh, I think... I think the heads are gonna roll for what happened at the Champions League final. Let's put it that way. You cannot treat. I'm still a little, uh, uh, a little, little, little pissed that they just still think that English fans uh, are automatically hool hooligans or, or whatever they're planning around that. But yeah, if it's all French crowd, then the police is nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. So you thought that France is going to pipe, 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 but then Cornelius, uh, after a nice assist by Heuberg, make, makes it 1-1 one, one, and uh, they even get, 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 get a winner because, uh, unfortunately, Theo Hernandez, uh, partying too much with Milan, twice uh, is not really on him and especially the second goal in the 88th doesn't look good at all. And Denmark with a shock win in France. So the two outsiders uh, in each game won already there. Then the other shock was clearly uh, Hungary beating England 1-0. Uh, in, in a game where Hungary had had a, a, a good, good chance, we need to talk about uh, the fact that although this was uh, supposed to be played in front of an empty stadium, they used a loophole that you can uh, get about 25,000 under, uh, under 14 year olds in. Yeah, uh, sounds nice in theory, however, those also whistled uh, when the English players kneeled down and... Uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, you know, there is a certain type of kids, especially at that age, they already have been educated, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't, it doesn't really help. I think it was rather appalling, the whole thing. Appalling was also the decision that led to the Hungarian goal, which honestly, um, I think Hungary did deserve to go in the lead. However, the penalty decision was ridiculous. Soboschlein make uh, gets this in and then the game got a little bit tight, but Hungary hang on to the win. And yesterday evening, uh, Italy and Germany, I think Germany for the first 20 minutes was a little bit more dangerous, more composed team. But then Italy really grabbed the game and created chances. However, couldn't convert them or was a little bit, uh, you know, clumsy in converting them. And so it never got, uh, it, 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 it never went into the goal. Then finally, finally Pellegrini uh, after Nyonto, who actually uh, plays in Switzerland, he had a brilliant de de debut. Finally, they make it 1-0, only to concede by Kimmich. And then actually Germany was a little bit better uh, to end it. I think overall probably a fair 1-1, one, one, although I thought that Italy was a little bit more mature team, which uh, so, so, so surprised me given their horror showing against Argentina. Again, all these results need to be uh, taken with a little bit of grain. This doesn't automatically mean that Argentina the World Cup favorites um, over Germany um, or whatever. However, it shows a little bit that Germany is also in kind of a little bit of a finding phase and Italy definitely can use now this break to really uh, find a new generation. And I think that they uh, did this. Now, 
let's go to the other leagues. We have uh, in League B, of course, this was th uh, <laughs> the schedule was wiped off because of Scotland having to play Yugo Ukraine in the player Soviet only. And also uh, Russia has been disqualified, so we have very, very little games here. Uh, of note to me is the 1-0 win of Norway in Serbia, that's a big one. Uh, also Sweden 2-0 uh, over Slow Slovenia. That group, Norway uh, with the two Northern and the two uh, former Yugoslav nations, seems to be the toughest. Finland, a 1-1 against Bosnia is good and Montenegro beating 2-0. Uh, Romania, also Israel, Iceland, 2-2 in a group that, act that that's the Russia group where I think everyone will be happy they're not getting relegated there. Uh, we also had from match the two already, Armenia beating Ireland. That is a little bit an eyebrow raiser to be honest. And yeah, maybe I should have gotten that Armenia jersey. Maybe it's okay. Uh, in League C, um, I think a big result was Greece against Northern Ireland. A 1-0 win. Bulgaria 1-1 against North Macedonia. Other than that, um, nothing really that to me sticks out in a way. And uh, in League C, of course, San Marino keeps on losing. I was surprised how many Baltic teams are in League C now. Uh, Liechtenstein also not really in a good form, so Moldova 2-0 over Liechtenstein as well. So let's look at the standings. Uh, we'll start in League D, so we go back up. Uh, we not much uh, FF after one round, but uh, you can already see a little bit things are falling in one direction. In League C, if I look at the groups, to me it really seems that Turkey is too good for League C. Um, as is potentially Greece, especially now that they won in Northern Ireland uh, and Slovakia, definitely. The most competitive one seems to be C4, uh, with I think Georgia, Bulgaria and North Macedonia all having a similar chance. I would give the nod to North Macedonia uh, for sure, uh, given what they have been showing over the past year or so. Um, year and a half, yeah. Um, in Group A, uh, in League B, we have a surprise leader with uh, yeah, with one win only, Armenia. Uh, but I think it, uh, this is one where Ukraine probably should get promoted out, out of the Iceland, Israel, Albania group. Uh, yeah, one of those will play League A next season, and yeah, I actually think it. Uh, gut feeling Albania, which is a little bit uh, weird, especially when I look the look look at B four, uh, B three also rather even group. Um, Let's see who, who, who will get, get, get out there. The odds at the moment, Mont Montenegro due to the win, and then Sweden, Norway, Serbia, and Slovenia. I think uh, it will be, uh, I think it could very well be still a three way race. Because I think Serbia has, has, has it in them to make it exciting. But at the moment, the two Nordic countries have the advantage there. Sweden, definitely the favorite. And then League A, yeah, <laughs> who will make it into the playoffs? Who, who will go out? Austria is leading the group. Yay! For how long, the question is, as, as always, as does the Czech Republic, Hungary, and Hungary. Uh, three teams that every, everyone expected. Yeah, still very, very open to me, especially with the win of Hungary. The third group is wide open, uh, but that might change quickly. Um, the Netherlands put themselves in a really good position. The last group is also the most interesting one because the win of the group will most likely, or uh, they have already indicated only from there, uh, whoever will win this group will host the final four. So uh, that's interesting as well. And with that, we actually have that the Netherlands are now the top favorite because they are odds on to win this group. And in addition, they will get the hosting rights. Uh, Denmark, Portugal and Italy round out the top four. Now, as for upcoming matches, I mean, it starts already to, 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 uh, today. Um, I think the big one is, of course, a replay on Monday between Croatia and France for the World Cup final. And of course, Georgia, Germany, England, uh, those are the two games that Stick out a little bit. I probably will be watching also Austria against Denmark. In League B, um, we get now, uh, it's all uh, mangled up, but Sweden, Norway. Very, very nice duel, I have, have to say. And then we get a little bit of match they won from, uh, <laughs> the, from uh, the, the, the group with Ukraine and Scotland. Uh, as I said, the schedule there is an absolute mess. In League C, uh, you get to hear Bulgaria, Georgia, you know, I have ties to Bulgaria. So that lo uh, that looks interesting. Other than that, uh, I don't see really uh, Kosovo, Greece, maybe. I, d I don't know. And then here are the matches for League D with the uh, um, Barnstormer San Marino against Malta and then Andorra against Moldova, a duel of uh, two flags that are very, very similar. So yeah, that was it for me from the Nations League. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.
Hey, just in case you enjoyed this video, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider following me on social media and actually subscribe to my channel so that you stay updated with everything that happens in my SOFA universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.